we'll start by taking a quick look at the stock suspension on the Cadillac. So this is a 66. They're pretty much the same 65 through 70. So we've got an upper control arm with a nice ugly ball joint. And there's a tension rod with a bushing up front tying into the lower control arm. And then look at that coil spring. That has been torched to lower it. So this thing sat pretty level and rode surprisingly good. So kudos to whoever uh, whoever did the, the torching on the springs originally, but uh, we're going to do a little bit better. So let's get all this apart and then we'll see how the chop and block kit goes together. Here is the chop and block front kit. Uh, well, half of it anyway. Um, so what it consists of is we've got a new tubular lower control arm with the bag mount and shock mount built in. Um, it integrates the uh, tension rod uh, with an adjustable heim joint and a bracket to go into the frame. Um, so this gives you some adjustability for uh, caster uh, and also gives you a nice solid mount instead of that, that squishy bushing. So this will have all the articulation you need as you lift and drop. New upper control arm uh, with a new cross shaft, new ball joint, uh, upper bag cup, and uh, this kit doesn't include bags. Um, we're using the Slam Specialties SS7s. And then this is the upper shock mount, which is made to straddle the frame up front, and this runs to the inside of the frame rail. Um, so I'll get some pictures of that and kind of detail exactly where it goes. But basically it meets up, uh, it replaces one factory bumper bolt and then um, goes through an existing hole in the frame uh, in that same bumper bracket. And then it gives you uh, some crush sleeves to strengthen that area too. So you're not just clamping down and, and pinching the frame or pinching this bracket. Uh, comes with a new KYB shock and shock stud and everything. From the old upper control arm, you are going to need to retain this uh, camber adjuster thingy, this uh, um, eccentric uh, tapered upper mount. Um, and then this is the lower washer, actually, that sits under the, uh, the spindle and the castle nut tightens against that. So um, make sure you retain those, get them off of the old control arms before you go chuck them in the bin. Um, new grade eight hardware all around and uh, that's about it. So let's get it on the car. All right, Rick got everything cleared out of the way there. So lower control arm, upper control arm, um, spindle we just tied up with some uh, yeah, OSHA approved uh, Romex to keep tension off the brake line. Um, for the shock bracket, we will be removing that bumper bolt, but we'll wait to do that until we've got uh, the spring pocket cut out. So we're gonna be running a seven inch Slam Specialties bag in here. And to clear it, we're gonna basically trim back here around just the edge of this lip and then up and over under that hole and then back and then same deal on this side, just trim that back. You end up opening this gap up a little bit on both sides. So we'll just weld that in to, uh, to close that gap back up and keep all the structure. Um, and then just a little grinder, a little lick of paint, and we'll be good to go. So let me get that marked up and cut, and we'll move on. All right, so basically we trimmed out any of the areas where the bag might rub. So just trim this back and this back on the side, and then cut sort of an eyebrow up along the, the front edge or the outer edge. The inside we looked, the bag actually sits sort of cocked away from that, um, so there shouldn't be any chance of it rubbing. We'll go ahead and double check when everything's bolted down, but it looks like uh, there's plenty of clearance on the back. Um, so yeah, wait for this paint to dry and then we will get on assembling the new front end. So we went to put the airbag in and we noticed that the sides were just a little tight for space. Um, we don't want to take a chance on this thing rubbing, especially with the customer being 800 miles away. So we went ahead and trimmed a little bit more. So you can see we're basically flush with the sides of the spring pocket now. Um, that did expose a couple gaps um, on both sides, one there and one there. So what we're gonna do is just weld those gaps back in. Um, I don't think it would ever be an issue. We didn't leave any stress risers or anything like that, but 
better safe than sorry, and it only takes a few minutes to weld it up. So if, uh, if you trim back far enough for a seven inch slam bag, you'll probably want to count on doing this as well. One other thing to note, I guess certain years uh, or certain engine uh, options on the 65 through 70s have different oil filter positions. And we've seen where the standard oil filter contacts the, the upper shock mount um, and requires, I guess there's a shorter model of the same oil filter uh, that you have to switch to. In our case, the oil filter housing and everything is pretty far out of the way. Only thing even close is the, uh, the, the radiator hose right there, but even it's not in the way. So we were able to get the, the shock mount um, on the passenger side without any issues. So with that done, I'm gonna throw some quick welds on this thing and then uh, get it ground up and, uh, <laughs> ground up, uh, ground smooth and, uh, and then painted and then this thing's ready to assemble. All right. Not the prettiest welds, but we're filling a big old gap, so cut me some slack, would you? In any case, it's strong, strong enough for this section anyway. We'll grind all that back, paint it up, you won't even know it happened. So, all right, we can move on to the next step. All right, that's both fronts done. We've got the bag in there. So a good rule of thumb, I don't know if I covered this on the Continental video, but basically when we trim this pocket out, what we're looking for is being able to reach our hand up into this pocket and touch the bag without having our knuckles get cut up by the, um, by the edge of the pocket. So as long as we've got that clearance all the way around, which we do, then we can be pretty sure the, the bag isn't going to rub on anything. So upper and lower arms are in, shocks are in, steering's hooked back up, new cotter pins on everything. This should give you a pretty good idea of what's involved. It's nothing too crazy. All right, so now we can move on to the rear. Let me get over there and I'll give you a quick rundown. So here's the stock rear suspension with those, uh, those lovely torched coil springs. So we're going to pull the shocks, pull the coils, and then support the axle as we do that. And then we'll start uh, getting ready to pull the upper and lower arms. GM threw us for a nice little loop on the upper arm. Let me see if I can get up in there and show you. There they are. So on this side, the frame rail's in the way of the bolt. And on this side, the body's on the, in the way of the bolt. So what we're probably gonna have to do I assume these were built with the, the frame assembled and then the body put on, but basically we're going to cut a hole through the back seat area um, to access this bolt and be able to pull it all the way through so we can put the new chopping block uh, upper arms in. So yeah, what fun. Thanks GM. Uh, but yeah, we'll get the camera set up and get everything going. So we've got the chop and block rear kit laid out. So this fits 65 through 69 or 70. I think it's 70 rears. Um, so not a whole lot of parts, but it'll still be plenty of work. So obviously uh, lower link bars um, go in place of the stock ones. Um, then we've got a lower bag mount. Um, that and shock mount that basically wraps around the the bottom of the uh, the axle and mm -hmm. is held in place by by u bolts so we're not reusing the lower uh, spring perch on this one um, and then this is the upper bag mount and that goes on the side of the frame on the inside of the frame and we use a, a firestone f9000 sleeve bag uh, on these so you get a little bit more travel and a little softer ride than using a, a bellow style bag. And then upper links, obviously I already told you about what fun those are gonna be. And then here's the big part of the job. These are the frame notches and frame reinforcing plates. So these three bolts are gonna be on the outside of the frame and go to the inside of the frame to pick up three of the, the mounting bolts that are holding this bracket on. Um, so they provide a, a template to lay up onto the frame rail so you can 
know exactly where you need to cut for the notch, where you need to drill all the holes and everything. So try and make it as easy as possible. We're gonna see how, uh, how clean we can make it. Just do a nice little notch. And uh, these are raw steel, so I'm thinking we'll probably weld them fully in um, and then run the bolts through them as well, uh, just for ultimate strength. And then obviously you get a bag of hardware, some new shock studs and the U-bolts and then a pair of KYB shocks. So yeah, hopefully everything goes uh, the way it's supposed to go. The, the upper link bolts are the, uh, the only big challenge so far. So we'll see what else develops. All right, in the rear, we've got the new link bars in, uppers and lowers. Everything's greased and ready to rock. The uh, GM uh, service manual basically talks about how to get these upper uh, link arm bolts out on the frame side. And it basically involves marking and drilling um, two holes in the body through the where the back seat is. So that's what we did and it worked out perfectly. We'll uh, go pick up some little dummy rubber plugs or whatever to, uh, to plug those holes once we're all done and interiors going back together. So with that out of the way, um, we jacked the axle up, um, removed the bump stops, removed the, there's a snubber assembly that goes right here on top of the, the pumpkin and uh, a little rubber bump stop that it hits there. This whole plate's probably gonna come off when we cut the tunnel, um, but for now, we're just basically, we've got it to where we can jack the axle up. Oops, sorry. And, uh, and it touches the frame. Um, so the next step is we're going to um, set up the rear upper bag mounts. Um, they sit, oh, here, let me grab one real quick. Um, that is axle. This should be frame. All right. So let's see how badly I can botch this. Ugh. All right. So the upper bag mount sits right up in here. Is that snug enough to <laughs> give you a rough idea of how it goes? So what we're going to do is mark these two bolt holes down here um, and then situate this. That'll give us the location for these same two bolt holes on the outside of the frame for the notch. Um, and then I can basically lay that template onto the side of the frame, mark the rest of the drill holes and, uh, and get everything bolted together and get that, uh, that notch welded in. So that's the upper shock mount way up there, probably out of focus. That's the upper bag mount. And, uh, so yeah, we'll try and get that situated today on both sides and then, uh, see if we can get the frame notch cut today too. All right, with the four holes drilled through the frame completely for the bag bracket, that gives us four holes that line up for the frame notch as well. Um, so I laid the, the template on there, um, lined it up with those four holes, and then marked where the, uh, the notch cutout needs to be. So the, the silver line here um, is where the inside of the notch is, and then I just traced around the black with the black um, about a quarter inch out to account for the thickness of the, the curved part of the notch. So we're gonna cut that out uh, with a plasma cutter, uh, get the outer layer done first, um, or the outside of the frame rail, and then we'll transfer that pattern to the inside of the frame rail, and then just do the same thing, uh, and then clean it up with a flap wheel. Um, this car had a uh, bad filler neck uh, hose, um, the hose that goes from the gas tank to the, uh, you know, the filler neck itself. So we went ahead and dropped the tank. That's probably a smart idea, given that the fuel lines are like right in line of where the, uh, all the cutting and grinding is going to be happening. So if you're able to drop the tank, this is probably a good time to do it because uh, it's going to throw some sparks for sure. So, all right, let's get uh, this situated and get going. All right, a little bit of progress got both frame notches welded in, lined everything up, welded all the edges, and then uh, these two holes on the notch don't pass through uh, to the bag bracket, so we just welded those up. Um, additionally, under here, uh, you can't really see it. Let me go around to this side. 
There we go. So there's a little bit of trimming on this bracket right here, um, just to clear the the inside of the notch as it uh, as it cycles up in there. So minor clearances. You just want to jack the axle up and down a bunch of times and just make sure everything's clearing. You're not snagging any brake lines or anything like that. So we've got this bag bracket up and installed. We've got the lower bag brackets um, held on. They're just U-bolted uh, in place. And then they actually, the way they lock into position is, let me come back around, is right up against the, uh, the original spring perch. So they've really got nowhere to go. Um, so yeah, we are wrapping things up, put some paint on this thing, install some bags and shocks, and we will be ready to put it on the ground and see how much of the tunnel needs to be cut. All right, so here's where we're at. We've got upper and lower links in, upper and lower bag brackets are in, frame notches are in, um, everything's painted up, cleaned up, bolted together. We've got the bags and shocks mounted. And so now what we've done is jacked up the axle all the way with the front of the car supported, of course. We don't want to tip this thing off the rack. And we have jacked it up to the point where we can see exactly where the drive shaft is touching the floor. So for starters, we've got where we pulled that little rubber bump stop off of there and that plate. This is the plate on the body side. So we're gonna have to remove that obviously because it's actually physically touching right there right now. But we've also got some floor clearance issues right up in here. It looks like as soon as we clear this guy, it's gonna be touching right here. So the big question mark is, so we know we're gonna cut here. This is all under seat area. So we're just gonna make a straight cut zip and on the other side and get that clearance in. Um, and then see if we're all the way up in the notch at that point without getting into here. Looks like right now there's probably about uh, three eighths of an inch of clearance. And the closer we get to the transmission, the, you know, the less it moves as it drops. So we're really, really close already. It's already up in the notch a little bit, as you can see. That's oh, a little crooked right now. But yeah, we're up in there a little bit already. We just need to get it the rest of the way up and see if we can get this thing to lay out. So that's the next step. We'll uh, mark and cut and try not to catch an interior on fire in the process. All right, so out back, uh, I think we already went over the, the main four link setup and everything, but there it is. We've got a Firestone 9000 series sleeve bag, KYB shock, all relocated from the, uh, the factory uh, locations. Um, so there's the height sensor. We were able to tuck it right under this link mount and then uh, tie it to the, the link bar. Um, so it actually calibrated great, has tons of travel, um, but not, <laughs> not too much travel, which is great. Um, moving over here, you can see the wiring and everything. We actually did bulkhead fittings uh, out, the, out of the floor. That won't focus. Anyway, we did bulkheads out uh, both sides for the lines running, uh, you know, to the, the front and rear bags. And then same with the wiring. We brought that right through the floor, right above it. Um, got the exhaust redone. There was pretty much no way of getting it cleanly over the axle and going under the axle like we did on the Continental. This gas tank just didn't have the clearance. Um, so it would have been kind of jank no matter what. So we've just kept it all, you know, dropping in front of the axle um, and then uh, just tucked it up so that it's above the, uh, the frame level front to back. Um, moving up along here, we just followed the factory uh, brake and fuel lines along the frame, tucked way up out of the way, which is great. Um, and then basically from there, split it off to the, uh, the sensors and everything. So let's get up front and we can show you the height sensor location. Oops. So it's tucked back there and then off of the, uh, the shock crossbar um, is the lower mountain. Again, we use the chop and block uh, tubing clamps so you can actually mock up your location and not be 100% committed until you know for sure that it's gonna work. Um, and then the height sensors themselves are just mounted right on the, the front uh, front cross member. So everything is snugged up. 
We did our bolt check. We did a calibration on the airlift system and it all calibrated out fine. This thing drives great. Um, shoot, what else is there to say? Um, yeah, if you want to lay all the way out on one of these Cadillacs, this is certainly a good way to do it. Um, I know you can cut up the factory uh, arms and and the factory rear perches and everything and get there, but this uh, this solves a lot of issues all in one shot. Shock location, um, you know, the the revised geometry of the arms. Um, yeah, it's a uh, it's a good package. So let's get it down off the rack and. Uh, and we'll show you the trunk and show you that uh, <laughs> that I'm still not a sheet metal guy when it comes to patching the floor. Now we're getting to the fun stuff. So everything underneath is pretty much buttoned up. We cut out the drive shaft uh, tunnel for that clearance and we've started running all of our lines and wires. So for the lines going out to the bags, we went ahead and put bulkhead fittings in the floor just makes things a little cleaner, keeps any chance of, uh, of airlines chafing on the sheet metal, um, you know, keeps that from happening. So we're just laying everything out. We're gonna do two five gallon tanks and two Vire 485s. Um, and then it's, it's getting the uh, airlift 3H management. So we've got uh, the start of things happening over here. We've got all the lines running out of the manifold. Um, and then we've got this side, the tank and the compressor and the manifold are mounted over here. I just wanted to show you this before I, uh, I cover it all up, but basically we put nut certs in the floor to mount the tank and we did nut certs on the compressor. So you don't have to get underneath. Once the exhaust is all rerouted, those mufflers might be right in the way of trying to get to the nuts on the bottom side of this, uh, this panel. So we went ahead and, and did nut certs so you can access everything through the, uh, through the trunk. Um, so he had specified, uh, that he wanted to keep the, the, back package tray area open for speakers. Uh, so we went ahead and put everything off to the sides. That'll give him the whole trunk floor and the whole back area to, to do what he wants. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll keep moving forward and hopefully have this thing moving up and down on its own later today. All right, we've got it down off the rack. I still need to reroute the cable for the controller before the transport comes and picks it up, but I'll wait until the back seat's going back in. We're still waiting for paint to dry right now. So you can see more of my fine sheet metal work right there. Basically, um, the tunnel had to be cut right in that section just to cover, uh, to clear the, the drive shaft. Um, when it's all the way down, it's touching up here as well, but just barely. So, I mean, you're not driving it on the ground so as long as you lift it up you know half an inch or whatever you've got the clearance you need to drive um so yeah tack welded it in in a bunch of spots and then just seam sealed it um i don't think it's going anywhere don't worry about that weird dimple at the front um that's my fine hammer work <laughs> uh over here in the trunk not much changed since the last time i showed you basically you know one Vire 485C and one five gallon aluminum tank per side uh, tucked in just inside of the uh, the main cargo. I, I consider this this area the main cargo space. So, you know, if we're not taking any of that up, uh, I think that's a win. So nothing crazy, no hard lines or anything, just real serviceable and, and accessible. Uh, water trap over there, easy to get to and drain when it's time. Um, and then there are the the other side of those bulkhead fittings and we'll tuck the the carpet over all that stuff um you know the factory carpets kind of seen better days but we uh we kept it as much as we could and uh yeah that's about it let's roll this thing outside and uh we'll show you what you've all really wanted to see and that's uh this thing laying on the ground We've got another typical Oklahoma windy uh, afternoon, bringing some bad weather away, no doubt. 
I, here she is. You can see it ain't getting any lower without cutting the body. This doesn't need a body drop. I think that's about it for this one. I'm gonna edit it a little different than that Continental video. Save all the uh, the wrenching and everything and just kind of focus on the highlights. Try and keep the, the length of the video down for you guys. I'd love to hear in the comments what you prefer. If you wanna see uh, Rick and myself uh, working in, in sped up motion, uh, taking off factory suspension and installing aftermarket stuff, I can do that too, but I have a feeling you kinda of just wanna see this some of the basic uh, overview of how we get there so once again thanks so much for watching